All right, out here on uh, Fletcher Sled Wars today, gonna be uh, chasing some bluegills uh, and uh, pike. Maybe a couple perch mixed in and a couple bass. Uh, so it should be a good day. I was out here with my boys uh, over the weekend and uh, we caught just a ton of uh, bluegills. It was really fast action, it was a lot of fun. So hopefully I can get a good episode in today and show you guys some of the stuff that uh, I want to show you. Um, mostly the biggest goal today is to show you how to set up a pike dip up. And, uh, Maybe get a couple of those big buggers on the ice. All right, see you on the ice. Look at that beautiful scenery, just gorgeous. Okay, today I'm going to show you guys how I fish for pike with a tip-up. Uh, first thing you're going to need, obviously, is a tip-up. Uh, on this I put about uh, probably 50 to 100 yards of um, 20 to 30 pound uh, ice fishing line, braided line. Um, and then I put on a, uh, a fluorocarbon leader. Um, a lot of guys use a, a steel leader, but uh, I prefer fluorocarbon because you get more bites. Um, you do have to be more careful when you're fighting the fish in because you can break through it. Um, so I'm using a 15 pound fluorocarbon leader um, and I'm just a little bit more careful than the average bear when I'm fighting them and not horsing them too much and using them, using my fingers as a drag system and letting, uh, letting the, uh, the fish run if they want to. It's especially critical. Okay, so first thing you do is you tie on your uh, fluorocarbon leader um, and then I tie on a number, I think it's a number four hook, trouble hook, and I tip it with a large minnow. Alright, so let's get this set up. Alright, the first thing you'll want to do is find the bottom. So you can either use a depth finder or since I'm fishing with such a large minnow, I actually have two, my two largest sinkers, or two good sized sinkers on there, and I can use that too um, in shallow water. This is only about uh, six foot deep here. So send down your line, find bottom. I put the uh, the the minnow about uh, two feet above the bottom, which coincides about perfectly with where I have that knot there. So that's just what I'm gonna use for my marker. I normally use a, uh, you can see it right there. I normally use a bobber stop to mark my depth, but since it works out so perfectly with where my leader knot is, I'm just gonna use that today. Uh, next, for pike, they're big fish, so you should really use a big minnow. Um, I've caught them on teardrops while I've been pan fishing before, so it doesn't really matter that much, but the general rule is the bigger the, bigger the fish, the bigger the bait, or the bigger the bait, the bigger the fish you catch. So I'm going to be using a, uh, a sucker chub today. In this hole, I also have uh, golden shiners. I might try on my other tip-up. For the sucker, I hook right behind the dorsal fin. You want to get enough meat so that the the sucker can't get off, but you don't want to get so you want to get so deep into there that you hit the spine or the air bladder and kill it. Suckers are really tough. That's one of the reasons why I really like fishing for them for pike. A pike love them, and B they're tough as snot. So set that down. Just like that, you're fishing. There we go, let's see if I can. All right, so, just like that. As you can see, the sucker will pull out the, uh, the line. So you wanna set it on your more sensitive settings. Or your more, your less sensitive setting, I should say. There you go, you're fishing for pike. When I get a flag, I'll come over and show you how I fight them in with that fluorocarbon line. You have to be a lot more careful with it. 
but you do get more more bites, more flags. All right, today I'm gonna show you guys how to uh, drop shot for bluegills. Um, this is gonna be kind of hard to show on the camera because uh, it requires such small little baits, but um, right there is a little tungsten jig, and up above it drops that shot, drop shot style is a little fly that you'd use for fly fishing. And that acts as the uh, the bait that you normally drop shot with in a normal drop shot rig. That little tungsten weight goes down to the bottom and you can just sit there and just jig and twitch that uh, that fly and make it dance just like a uh, just like a little bug off the bottom. And they, and they really love that. Um, I do tip this with a wax worm. Um, if they're not interested in the fly, you can bring it up. Then you can jig your, uh, your little tungsten jig of the wax worm, and that's a really effective uh, technique for bluegills as well. All right, so let's uh, get these in the water, start fishing, and see what kind of action we can come up with. I got my first bluegill right there. He's uh, just barely six or seven inches, but. At least it was something. Caught him on the uh, on the drop shot. Got him. Got him on the spoon. Huge, but hey, fish is a fish. Let's see if any of his buddies are down there. I think he was by himself, though. Three for the day. I got a, uh, I'm out fishing right now. It's called a bluegill. All right, we got a pike down there. Not huge. So while he's there, the, uh, nothing else is going to come in. So maybe I can get him to bite. Probably steal my spoon, but it might be fun. Yep, he's going to commit. This will be fun. You gonna take it, buddy? Can't stand it. He's right underneath the hole. I don't know if you guys can see him or not, but he's just sitting there staring at it.
while he's here, the bluegills aren't going to come in. Got him. <laughs> oh, he came off. He either came off or he uh, cut me. Oh, he came off. I should really check my line. I didn't have my drag set right. He was just peeling drag right out. No, he never nicked the line. The line is still good. I didn't have enough drag on there. So he's able to just pull it right out. They have a lot harder mouth than what a bluegill does or a birch does, so those little hooks have a harder time sticking in them. It's probably going to be a while before anything else comes in. If I can normally move everything else off. And he's not coming back. He felt the hooks. Well, it still, that was cool nonetheless. Hopefully I, uh, you guys can see him actually take that on camera. Alright, look like, see what we got. It up for the day. Um, I wound up catching I think uh, five bluegills. I had uh, that one pike on that was uh, kind of cool. Um, and then I had uh, two more flags. One I think the fish was on, the other one I just picked it up and dropped it. So all together not too bad of a day out here in Fletcher's. I'll see the fish actually uh, come in and take the bait and watch them. And uh, One of the reasons why I came out here is because the water is shallow. Uh, the clarity is pretty good, and you can watch the fish come in. You know, my Vexlar, not my Vexlar, my uh, Lorance is still down, and uh, I'm uh, so it's a little bit of a handicap for bluegills if I go anywhere else. Um, so here it's nice that I can just see them and play with them. I don't have to, uh, I don't have to rely on electronics to catch fish. So anyhow, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this episode, and I'll uh, see you in the next time. Uh, remember to. Uh, Subscribe, like, and uh, share this video. Alright, have a good day.